Easy. You gotta win this, you gotta win this round, right? Sir. Sure. Vamos a ganar. Yes, sir. Everybody's looking at you, man. Come on. It's gonna be our first championship, right? It's gonna be the first one, it's gonna be the best one. Go get him. Yes, sir. Right? Sir. Walking to the gym is it's, it's spiritual, man. You, you come in here and you just, you gotta love it, number one, because you, you gotta have a, a big drive to, to box. You gotta want it in your heart. Pushalo, Joel, pushalo, Joel. Que no descanse, pushalo, pushalo. Put it to be together. Not that hard, put your feet together, guys, jump. Hurry up, guys, too slow, too slow, move it, too slow. Go a little faster, son, a little faster, son. Atta boy, atta boy, just like that, that's what I want. Come on, jump. You can't do it in here, you're not gonna do it in the ring. Come on, guys, we're just getting warmed up. We're just getting warmed up. Come on. I'm the Alejandro Molesto. Hola. I like the coaches. They're tough. They don't play around. They don't play games. They make us work hard. You got to lose 15 pounds, Adrian. You got to move faster than that, Adrian. I push my kids a lot. Man. I, like I said, they got to have that drive, so I, I push them oh, to go. the limit. I want your feet together. Put them together. Go. Put them together. Put them together. Keep them together. See? You can do it. Go. They're tough, Go. but like, um, since they're tough, it's uh, it's better because uh, it gets other people to work harder, like um, listen more, and yeah. Uh, 11, 12, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, my kids started out at eight years old. The oldest one I got in my gym right now is currently 34 years old. We take no prisoners. When they get in here, we're gonna push them all. We push them all to the limit. Too slow, too slow, come on. Come on, three times, three times. Left, right, left, right, left, right. Go, guys, go. Come on, faster, pick it up, pick it up. Come on, let's go. Hurry up, Jessica, you holding anybody up, Jessica? Waiting on you, Jessica. Waiting on you, Jessica, come on. Chico has gone, Sammy Burke took over, and Sammy uh, had a lot of connections, and Sammy, of course, everybody knows Rocky and Louie, his two boys, and they were real big in boxing here in the amateurs. People like him and Joe Bob Sellers, and, and then also the other, the other coaches, uh, uh, Larry Renio, you know, Joe Hidalgo, uh, were very instrumental in, in uh, initiating the original PAL program. most influential person would have to be Sammy Burke. So Sammy was instrumental in all his connections and Sammy had a, a lot of influences. Well, he sent several of us down to the Olympic Training Center and we lived there for a whole month and we got to work out there. It, it enabled um, uh, the, pro the boxing program to you know, go on not only locally but to compete on a national level and to take these kids that were at risk and uh, underprivileged to take them on trips and, and uh, teach them some discipline, teach them about their body a little bit, taking care of themselves, uh, give them some self-esteem and, and get them out of the bad environment into a, uh, into a program that uh, 
you know, they, they could have some monitoring and people that take care of them. You know, these are kids with, without fathers or, you know, at-risk kids that, you know, these are guys that are my brothers to, to this day. And uh, one thing they said is if, if it wasn't for your dad, I probably would end up in prison or I would end up, you know, uh, dead or, you know, so all, all that, you know, just comes to light and, you know, it gives me a good feeling about my dad. He was a, a lot on his own when he was in uh, a youth, when he was in high school. Um, and so, you know, he had to struggle and there was a, a few people that took him under, his, uh, under their wing and, and mentored him. And uh, he just wanted to repay that back to the community and, and he loved boxing. So the best way he could was to, to train these kids and mentor them and give them the best advice he could through boxing. We used to work out the DFW on, uh, on Loman way back when. Before that, we, we jumped around for, for many years. When this building became vacant, we were lucky enough and blessed to, to get this building. Uh, I used to fight professionally. I was an amateur boxer and I was a, a product of the PAL program. And uh, later on I went on and, and turned professional and I fought um, Hall of Famers, Freddie Roach and Hector Macho Camacho on national TV. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous decision. For the winner and new ESPN Junior Lightweight Champion, Louis. decision and grabs the ESPN Junior Lightweight Championship with a unanimous decision. The majority of the kids that are involved in our program come from single families, or single parent homes. Um, uh, a lot of them are at risk, a, lo a lot of them are underprivileged. They seem to be the ones that are attracted to boxing also because it gives them uh, a sense of being, um, you know, gives them that tough guy sense without having them taken to the streets. Every one of these kids here pretty much has a rough coming up. And if they ain't here, you know, they're doing, they're getting into something else. And, you know, it helped me stay out of trouble because, you know, you see the school in the gym at home. And it doesn't leave that much time, you know, to get into anything else. And, you know, it's macho. It's not a winning thing to do. Uh, there's a lot of these kids that don't have fathers and don't have a mentor. And, and uh, they, they don't have the discipline. You know, and that's what's wrong with, in my opinion, that's what's wrong with so many of the kids today. They don't have the discipline. Some of them can reprimand them the way they should be reprimanded. I got in trouble in seventh grade and um, ever since like I started coming like I just I started being more respectful and stuff and it keeps me out of trouble because I would just be out and about in this type of hour and later. The majority of my kids you know they, they get down near the gym they uh they ride their bikes or they walk. A lot of my kids are foster kids a lot of my borderline kids, you know, uh, they come to my gym because they, they feel accepted here at my gym and uh, we, don't, we don't judge them, you know. We
give them the opportunity, get them off the streets, give them the opportunity to make something of themselves and know what it is to be disciplined and work hard so that they can carry on throughout life and with the same attitude. What would you be doing without boxing? Um, probably just getting in trouble. Have you gotten in trouble at all in the past? Yeah, and drugs and suspension. I got caught with Xanax and then um, I overdosed on it and then just messed up. Does boxing give you something more to be proud of? Yeah. When people ask me what do I do on my free time, I don't say smoking. I, I tell them boxing. Well, boxing's always been a way out of uh, the lower economic level. You know, it's uh, you've always seen it. It's starting with you know the Irish when they first came in. You know, there was a lot of Irish fighters, and then the Jewish fighters and Italians. You know, they're all a lot of them are immigrants, and now you're seeing a, a large influx of the Hispanic fighters that are doing well. You know, it's just, it's a way out, you know, it's a, it's a way to better their lives, you know, it's, even though it's, it's very hard, you know, they have that dream that they strive for, and it gives these kids a, a light, you know, at the end of the tunnel. A lot of the kids who come in, you know, have been, you know, they've been fighting for years. They just haven't been in a constructive situation where they can learn how to use that and channel it in a different way. They walk in the gym, the majority of the kids are underdogs, you know, they're, they're uh, at risk, you know, a lot of them are underprivileged, some of them, they're, they're broken, they have broken English, it's just, you know, they come from um, uh, single parent homes and they're trying to make themselves better by going to the gym and doing something that they love to participate in, that they'll get recognition for, you know, positive recognition if they can get uh, mentoring from people that uh, you know, are willing to put the time and invest the time into these kids and give them some, you know, some security to make sure that you know, let them know that they're, hey, they're appreciated and that we enjoy them coming to the gym. You know, these people need to know that you know, some of them don't have the grades to be able to play school-sponsored sports. You know, they, they just don't have the grades because maybe they lack in English skills, maybe they just, whatever it may be, maybe their borderline gang activity or whatever, because we have gotten some of those kids out of gangs and got them in, invested into the, into the program. A lot of these kids are, they're smaller kids, or they, they, can, they can't excel in maybe football or basketball. Maybe, maybe they don't have money to, to, to pay the fee for soccer or softball, whatever it might be. So they come to my gym and they, uh, I mean, they love it. You know, there's a lot of kids that don't, you know, unprivileged kids that don't have a lot of money to keep, you know what I mean, like people around town that, that charge you monthly, you know, between 30 and $60 a month to, you know, to do the same thing that we can do here for, for basically free. The PAL program, you know, they, they supply the equipment for you. The, the fee is very minimal, you know, it's a very minimal fee that covers just insurance. It gives them a second chance. It gives them another opportunity to do well and to, to become successful in life. One day, my little brother, which he was in high school, he got in trouble in high school. This problem started. He started doing drugs. So I was like, you know what? This, this is going to stop now. So I started training him at the house. And then I brought him here to Pals. And then I go help them out to stay out of trouble. So how does boxing help you stay out of trouble? Uh, it, discipline. It, it helps me not, like, like, like party all the time. So. I used to weigh like 200 pounds. Oh really? Yeah, now I'm weighing like 140 or 138 right now. <laughs> I think he's doing really good. He's really good at it and I'm very proud of him. I think they're planning for sometime mid next year to go professional. And if you were to make money becoming a professional, would that help out? Yes, because right now it would be very, very helpful for us. 
I think it, it'll be more easier for us if he would make a little bit more than what we're making now. It's very, very difficult. It's been very difficult since day one, and, but we still continue and do our best. Maybe these kids have a lot of problems. <clears throat> we might be at home or at school, and they think maybe they're, they're down on life. They say, well, you know, you know, life isn't good, but they come over here and they work hard to, to achieve a goal and they compete. And when they win, boy, they, they get that feeling there. But they're on top of the world. And as a kid, you know, I know I would have been in a lot more trouble if it wasn't for boxing. That's for sure. You know, I, I had my own set of, of, of morals and guys that I, I wanted to live by. And it wasn't necessarily because it was right or wrong, it was because boxing needed it. And you know, now I, I thank God for, for this opportunity because I, I would have done a lot more wrong things had it not been for boxing. I like being here because if I wasn't here, I don't know where I would be, you know, be out messing around or something. A lot of parents tell me, they come back and tell me, hey, whatever you're doing to my kid, man, keep on doing it because, I mean, he, now it's a yes sir, no sir. I mean, they're doing their schoolwork, they're listening to me. It seems like they're driven, they tell me. They're driven, they have, they have a purpose now. When you do something that hard in your life, it changes your perception of what you're capable of. And I'm sure that they think of it too, you know, in, in similar ways, like, oh, well, you know, well, I got through practice, so maybe I can you know, get through this assignment, or maybe I can, you know, walk away from, you know, this guy who's maybe, you know, trying to get me in a confrontation. What you learn in boxing, or really any other sport, but especially, in my opinion, especially in boxing, because if you get up off that mat and come back strong and win a fight, it's the same thing that, that what happens in life. Yeah, I'm not Okay, show me. Go get him. Go get him, Miko. Go get him. What do you think you'd be doing without boxing? Probably just getting into trouble, man. Have you gotten in trouble in the past? Yeah, a lot. So it keeps me out of trouble. What kind of trouble? Fighting at school and like stuff like that. How many fights do you think you've gotten into? Uh, a couple. <laughs> Evan came to us about, uh, well, it's almost two years ago. He's been fighting with us. Evans around here from the body where I was born and raised here on, on Tornillo. Edmund rides his bike or walks to the gym every day. Yeah, Edmund's kind of one of those that, that he, it's a lot more uh, street life than, than anything else. And thanks to the program, he's in here now, and, and now we can kind of keep an eye on him and make sure he's headed to the right direction. He, li he likes... He likes, to, he, likes to, he likes to play, he likes being in places where he shouldn't be, you know, and, and that's like a lot of the kids that come to Powell, they, they're, they're, they're doing things they shouldn't be, so we try to make this their, their second home instead of that game, that, that street, that, you know, peer pressure thing that they got to put up with. I like to have them here because they stay away from trouble. They spend time doing their discipline, they spend time doing a lot of running, exercise, and I just don't want him, I'm a single mom, parent, mom, and I work and I'm busy, so I just don't want him, you know, like whenever out in the streets or nothing, I keep him busy. <laughs> hey, punches are gonna land where punches land. Seven. I really like the coaches because they're after them. They're not, it's not easy. Emin goes home, I'm really tired every day, and they're really disciplined on them. You know, they have to go out there and not, and do what they have to do. They can't be playing around and it helps them a lot. That's it. Keep walking around me, keep walking around me. Keep walking around me, Edmund. Don't stop. Come on, keep that head moving. Keep that head moving. Beautiful, come on. Keep it going, come on. Beautiful, come on. Keep walking around me. Push, push, push. There you go. These are the only male people he sees. His father is out of state. He, he talks to him and everything. He's there for him, but he doesn't live here in Las Cruces. So he has a lot of with coaches and all that, you know, talk to him and wherever, you know, problem, they're there to help him. Whether he chooses to go pro in boxing or not is irrelevant to me, really. Um, I'm more concerned of th that, that it helps him 
come out of his economic era and he pushes forward. Are you guys a close family? Oh yes, we're a really close family. You know, we're always doing something, you know, and Emin is the one that, the little one, so we're always trying to have him with us doing something. How tough has it been being a single parent? Oh, really tough. I have to be mom and dad. It's really tough, not only money-wise, money but to be a mom and a dad and be there for my kids because that's a, it's not about money, it's all about how to raise them. Do you like living close to the PAL gym? Yes, it's nice living close to the PAL because, you know, I know him and whenever I can take him, I know he goes and comes right away. So it's really close and I like it, but I would like it out in the country better. <laughs> this house, my dad bought it like when I was like 13 or 14 years old. Back then when I was young, there was a really bad neighborhood, you know, what I remember. So that's why I'm really afraid having my kids in this neighborhood because when I was little, it was really bad. But right now it got a lot better, way better than when I was young. I really want for Edmund to um, you know, finish, graduate, and get a career. And that's why I tell Emin, Emin, yes, boxing is good for you and everything, but you have to have a career to be able to, not to be like me, stressing, you know, like struggling with everything. And, and you need to learn how to respect women, how to respect people, because if you respect, they respect you back. How long do you see yourself boxing? Uh, forever. <laughs> Would you like to be a professional? Yes, sir. Emin hey, Guzman is probably the most talented kid we have here. He's a, he's a, he's a pure boxer, man. He's a natural, you can say. Fast hands, great head movement, great foot movement. This punch is just slow. He's a natural. Nah, he's he's great, man. Edmund, he's a great boxer. He's one of the perfect, uh, perfect head movement, perfect footwork. He's a uh, he's a really really good Edmund. Really 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 good kid. One two three step, two three. You'll get the body here. He's yours. They kept matching your speed, I'm telling you. They all tried. They all tried for the first round. <laughs> There's no way. There's no way. No one. No one can do that, man. Fucking hit him beautiful. Powerful fighter. Kid. I mean, he got, he has what it takes to be a champion. I mean, they're just, his talent level is so much above these guys that, that he's only got 12 fights, but he's just naturally gifted, you know? Let's shine, baby. I want people to see what you have. I want them to see your talent. So let's shine, baby. I know, hey, you're, you're, you're like a motherfucking diamond in here. I want you to shine good, yeah, and you can shine with this kid, okay? He needs to believe in himself because he's got the skills and the natural skills. He's got the speed, he's got the power, and he's got the, the uh, technique down. He just needs to start believing in himself, and if he believes in himself, that kid can go far. Emin's a rocket, man. Uh, that kid is the most talented kid we have in the gym. The only person who can beat Emin is Emin. If Emin works 100%, if he gets 100%, I don't, I don't see that kid being beat. But he's doing really good. Everybody sees him and tells me Edmund's going to hopefully become somebody, you know, because he really, he's really, he does really good. And the thing I like about Edmund, when he gets up there to fight, he doesn't get nervous. Shove him up! Damn, boy, you look like Ali in here. You look good. You're not even tired, you're not even breathing hard, baby. How you feel? Get on him! Get on him! Get on him! 
he's one of the few kids that I can actually say he's got a future. Be. If he stays disciplined and works hard, he's got a future in the professional ranks. Edmund Guzman, I mean, you guys watch out for him. Yeah, everybody, everybody watch out. I told you, baby. That's, uh, that's what I'm talking about, baby. Hey, that's how you fight. That's why you do what you do, baby. Hey, you have all the talent in the world. All we gotta do is keep it busy, okay? Got all the talent in the world, baby. Hey, your, 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 your place is in this ring, not on the streets, baby. You're, th this is where you belong, in the ring, not on the motherfucking streets, baby, okay? And you know what I mean, baby. You, you, you need to be in here. This is, this is where you live, right here. This is where your heart's at. Let's go get that gold medal. That's what we need to do, baby. Let's go get that gold medal. You deserve it. To me, he's like a son to me. And I don't, I don't like it when he's out in the streets and he knows it. And he's not as bad as he, as he used to be, but he could be a lot better than what he is. So, so that's, why, that's why I always, I always, I guess you could say I always throw it in his face. But that's my job as his coach and as his friend to put it in his face, you know, to, 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 to not be out there. That's what I need, somebody to be hard on them, somebody to make them see that they're wrong. It's not only about boxing. It's not only just about boxing. If anybody in here deserves that gold medal, it's you. You work, but you gotta work for it, baby. Nobody's gonna come and give it to you. You gotta work for it. Just like that. Hey, you're unstoppable when you put your mind to it. You're unstoppable when you wanna be. And you can win. You can be a champion, bro. You can have your name on the wall, your picture up on the wall. If one day you became a successful boxer, what would be the first thing you do? Um, probably fix up the house, fix up the house, and I don't know. <laughs> Why would you do that? Because it's kind of old. He tells me, Mom, whenever I grow up, I'm going to, you know, have money and I'm going to help you and, and all that. You know, like kids tell me, I go, okay, I mean, but I tell them, no, you know, for them to do it for themselves. I'm trying to do my best, whatever I can but I want for him to do it for themselves. Do they have to be at-risk kids to come here or? No, well, as a matter of fact, we encourage all kids and any kid to come in here. Joel, he's a, he's a great kid too, man. He um, smart, smart as hell. And everything you, like, I've noticed about Joel is if I give him an, uh, you know, something like, hey, you need to work on, on moving your head, then he'll, he'll work on it for two, three days, and you look over and he's working on it, he's working on it, he's working on it, and then you go to him and you're like, hey, uh, work on keeping your jab straight. And he's there working on keeping his jab straight, hard worker, hard worker and smart. Joel is, he's unique here. Because Joel is, uh, out of all my kids, Joel is probably, when that bell rings, boy, He's like, he's like a shark that smells blood, man. He goes in there, he goes for the kill. Oh yeah, well, that's the little uh, Roberto Duran. That kid, uh, he's got the heart of a tiger, man. Um, that kid's uh, tough all the way around. We just gotta refine his skills and get him to actually learn all the, the fundamentals and the solid techniques. So that kid's got a heart of a tiger, yeah. Two. Beautiful. See that? Under. Three. Under. Under. Right. And then Joel, you might not tell by looking at him, but he, uh, the kid's a brain, man. Welcome, everybody. We are very excited to see so many familiar faces in this audience. And this is the first groundbreaking ever for the first ever early college high school in New Mexico. Now I would like to present students who can tell us why they chose to join this endeavor. Our first student speaker, Joel Macias. Joined today by his mother Lydia Macias and his boxing coach Lorenzo. Can I have you please stand? I got selected because of good grades, because I never I never caused any problems at school. 
and because I take I take more time in in studying than socializing and and sports and all that. He's very very smart. That's something that is very good. Uh, uh, you know about him that he doesn't struggle to to do better in school, to do more in school because he's he's there. He's there. And he I think he pushes himself very hard. Joel came, Joel came to us highly recommended for self motivation and eagerness to learn. Joel plans to pursue a degree in engineering. ECHS, it's not just a school, it's an opportunity. The opportunity to be ahead in Tustin. It is also a position, a position of honor, great responsibility, maturity, and endurance, the mental endurance, the ability to keep going and keep searching and building on your knowledge. We here at ECHS have pride in all of our work and we build on it. We never settle for good, we have to be great. Here, ECHS is also a great environment because everybody here is full of knowledge and education and every day we are ready to learn something new. ECHS is truly the best place to develop mentally and academically. Thank you and a special thanks to the creators, organizers and supporters of ECHS, our principal and our teachers. We couldn't have done it without you. Thank you. That's one kid I can see him, he's gonna make it in life. I think if he stays in here, and you know I me, mean, he boxes, he's a hell of a boxer too. You never know, he could go both ways for that boy. I think there's a great benefit in having something in your life that's the hardest thing you've ever done because it makes the rest of the world look like you're coasting. Right now, I am what's known as ABD, which is all but dissertation. So I've completed all of my coursework and passed my comprehensive exams in my PhD program, which I'm in rhetoric and professional communication. So I have about another year left. I'm writing my dissertation right now. And I work here at the Arrowhead Center on campus as a business research analyst. Um, basically, we help inventors and small business owners to launch new ventures or to expand their existing businesses. So I do that, and I'm a part-time technical writer and editor for a civilian subcontractor for the Navy. What did your coworkers say when they found <laughs> out? Um, they're usually like my husband when I said I wanted to box incredulous, you know, and then they're awestruck and, you know, some of them are like, why would you do that? Vicky came to us and she just come to the gym and she, she uh, what, Vicky stood out because she's a female, she's 34 years old, and she's beating all the guys in the run. We're doing push-ups, we're doing sit-ups, we're doing the plyos and she's always being all the she's being all the guys. She's being a teenager. She's being the men here. I mean, I said, wait a minute. I said, wait a minute. Who, who is this woman? It's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, physically, mentally, everything. You know, just in terms of the physicality, I was in decent shape when I came in. I train horses, so you know, I get a little bit of exercise from that, but. I had never experienced anything like a real boxing workout. What did you think the first time you found out she was a teacher? It kind of freaked me out. I said, what, you're a professor? What are you doing here? You see her in here and you don't realize that, you know, she's going to school, she's teaching. Like, yeah, it's a totally different person in here, I'm guessing, because I know her as Becky, like, in here. And then I find out, like, you teach Becky? And she's like, yeah, and I'm like, oh, Sorry. <laughs> there's everybody else and there's me. Um, and I, I mean that in the best possible way, but I was too old to be coming in to start. You know, I'm working on a PhD. You know, I I've, I've figured out this, this sounds really terrible, but doing the math, I've invested almost 100 grand in my brain and now I'm gonna let people punch me in it. <laughs> so it was, um, I, you know, I was obviously different and it made it didn't matter 
you know, we're out there running together, we're doing exercises together, we're teaching one another, um, and we're all the same when we get in there. And that's, that's beautiful. It's a great thing in my life. She loves to help everybody. If she sees anybody that needs help with anything, if she sees somebody like, hey, your hand's down, you know what I mean? She'll go and tell them, hey, you need to keep your hand up. She need, she, she'll like, she, she supports a lot of the kids in here, believe it or not. Everybody makes fun of me because I'm always like, if anyone needs help with homework, you know, English, social studies, you know, anything that's not math, I can help. Becky to me is one of like the nice people, the, the good people in this gym. And finally, he's from Las Cruces, out of the blue corner, Becky I'm not an amateur who's looking to go pro because this is how I'm planning to make my living. Um, this is something else entirely for me. I love my life. I love being in academia. I love being a professional writer. Um, but obviously I went looking for something, you know, for something more to challenge myself, to prove to myself that I could do things that I never thought I could do. Before we actually get in the ring, you know, we, we prepare the kids, make sure they're in condition, number one, and uh, we te teach them the basics before they get in there. And then finally, the, we throw them in the ring and we see what they're going to do. Daniel, how old are you? Okay, when's your birthday? Your last April, one? 26. April 26. Last one is Daniel Chavez. Where's Daniel? Yeah, baby, jump. Go ahead and step up. You're Michael? 62.2. Come on in here, Michael. Start. Michael, how old are you? How are you? Nine. How many? Five. Six. Six. Well, I'm the chief of officials for the state of New Mexico. And that means I'm the person who makes sure that all of the amateur boxers in the state of New Mexico are safe and that they follow all of the rules and regulations specific to USA Boxing. Anybody else? And this process that we're going through right now makes sure that everybody is equally matched according to USA Boxing's guidelines, rules, and regulations. 121.4. Say you have somebody who's 99 pounds and you try to match them with somebody who's 107 pounds, that's going to be huge. So you want to keep those classifications separate because weight makes a difference. Say you have a young boxer who's fought only twice and you put him up against somebody who's fought 90 times, the experience is going to make a real difference. Alex Holguin from Albuquerque, Pal. And Hector Karate from Las Cruces, Pal. Here we have Hector and Alex. Weights are good, they're both open. Yeah, that would be fine. Be so good. it's Alex Ogin. Both pals against each other. No right. side and south side. Are you guys? Wait, wait, wait. No, do you know I gotta write it down before you do that. Okay. Yes. So don't even get ahead. Yeah. Otherwise I'll just stop you. Okay? I think I have a really big responsibility, and so that's why I come. I come out 20, 30 times a year, come to these events that do weigh-ins from 7 to 9, 8 to 10, to make sure that they're safe, to make sure that everybody has a good time, but that they're safe. I mean, it's not normal to get punched in the head, you know. That's, that, that can be dangerous, and nowadays we hear about the concussions and stuff, you know coming out more, more than ever before. I was afraid in the beginning uh, because of a head injury or something, you know, like that. I've seen kids get injured, I've seen kids get knocked out, I've seen some I've seen and heard and read of some kids that slip into comas, uh, brain injuries, uh, 
broken bones, I mean, from ribs to hands to that, that type of stuff. Fighting out of the red corner from Elsie Howe Boxing and Munda Guzman. about the amateur program and it's a proven fact that that it ranks very low as far as sports related injuries I think it's something like 66 or 67 ranking the reason is it's uh, they monitor it and uh, very strictly you, know, you have to wear headgear you have to wear big gloves the sparring is very monitored a lot of protection and there's a there's a lot of rules in fact the amateurs uh, officiating is more difficult than the pros are in the amateurs it's very it it's very controlled we see someone that's uh, on the verge of and cannot defend themselves step right in right away fighter may get upset and, and I, I tell him you know we're doing it for your safety so that you can come back and fight a later time. No way. Fighting out of the red corner. And Elsie Powell, Jose Salina. Fighting out of the red corner. That's all I spar with. <laughs> what do you get out of sparring with the guys? I get I get used to getting hit hard and used to the power uh, and speed because a lot of girls don't really have that much power. You got so you got to have some competition. So I mean, she she works with the girls once in a while. She just works on her defense and stuff. And if you actually get ready for a fight, she needs to spar with the boys because. Uh, that's how good she is. You know, she's taking her hits in there. It's not that these boys are going easy on her. They maybe go easy on her for about 10 seconds, then they catch some and they're like, hey. Nice. She hits hard for a girl. Has she ever hurt you? Um, just today when she headbutted me. Told you not to bang with them. Don't frustrate with it. Don't frustrate with At the with beginning, you know, some of the guys, they don't want to hit her hard, so they're kind of just like, dude, she's going to kick your butt, bro. You hit her hard, bro. Trust me. They hold back, she's going to nice. kick their ass, I don't know. I mean, most of the time she does anyway. When she first started boxing, what were your thoughts on that? Mine? I didn't like it. Why's that? Because <laughs> she's a girl. I wanted her to be a cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> I guess not, huh? <laughs> well, I did cheerlead for about a year, and it wasn't for me at all. So, And then when I started boxing, she didn't like it. And then she saw me fight, and she finally um, started liking me to box. And the winning feature story about a young female boxer was produced by News 22 alum Adrian Guzman. We think the winning piece is worthy of a second airing tonight. There are many different kinds of boxers, from the featherweights to the heavyweights to the unbelievably fast. It's definitely a man sport, but you better not tell that to Ayana Vasquez. I want to be a pro boxer. In four, go! You change your passion for glory. Take my push up.
Ayana is only 10 years old and has been training since she was 6. Her father Rick, who is also her trainer, says it all started by accident. I couldn't leave my daughter at home by herself. She was only 7. She was actually only 6. So I started bringing her with me and to keep her out of the way, I'd put a pair of gloves on her and have her hit the bag and jump rope because she actually enjoyed boxing. So I, I let, her, uh, let her compete nationally. Inside these ropes can be scary for just about anybody. But imagine having to watch your own daughter get inside the ring. I was kind of like apprehensive. No, nobody wants to see their daughter get punched in the face. And then I saw how mean she could be. So I'm like, well, you know what? I, ain't got, I really don't have too much to be, a, to, be, to be afraid of. I get nervous when I'm like warming up or when I fight. It's like, I'm not nervous anymore. It's just, I go out there just to win the fight. Four, six, and eight, and you pin up and jump right back on them, okay? Not afraid and ready to face her opponents. The problem is, there's few around to take her on. Yeah, it's hard for for a female fighter of uh, 10 years old, 70 pounds, uh, to get a fight in the state because there's not that vet, that that many. I usually I have to take her out of state to, to fight her. So this fight night, with no one for Ayana to compete against, she's limited to working the raffle and cheering on her older brothers. Uppercut, Ricky! Uppercut! Use your power, Ricky! Use that right hand! And just because there are no girls around. It's no excuse not to box. She fights younger boys and she, she does pretty good. Most of Ayana's success is due to the fact that she has to fight boys that are bigger and stronger than her. That's all she spars is boys. But she's not the one you have to feel sorry for. She pretty much kills other little boys. It's kind of funny to watch. <laughs> she can take a punch just as well as she can give it. Not very many people really want to spar with us. But I can't blame them. I wouldn't get in there either. You better be careful. <laughs> I talked to you about five years ago, six years ago, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> what has changed in those six years? A lot. I've competed way more, uh, started winning more bouts, and more titles. Well, we were part of Ayana. She's our national champion. Our latest national champion. We just, she just won nationals this past year. I should have gone to the one, 114 pound female. I have uh, about five silver glove um, state, um, got four pal nationals and uh, two golden gloves and I got just recently won the junior olympics, I got uh, gold um, number one in the nation at 114. Gosh I've known her from day one you know she's just a, a fantastic young lady that you know, has worked hard and, and has dedicated and won, you know, all these national titles. She doesn't hear what I hear a lot of the times, but I hear a lot of the kids like, oh yeah, Ayana's bad or Ayana, you know what I mean? They all look up to her, you know what I mean? And if Ayana's pushing, then like the whole gym is, the whole gym is pushing if Ayana's pushing. We also laugh because, I mean, she is, she is the sparring that you do before you fight to make your fight feel easier. So how long have you been boxing? A year. Like it? Yeah, it's fun. How far do you want to take boxing? Uh, I actually want to make it to the Olympics, Women's Olympics. That's my goal right now. So. For us to be in there with Iana, who has been as experienced as she is and uh, is, is a good opportunity for us. So, you know, anytime we can do that is, is a privilege actually for us to be in there with Iana. Did you know before going in how good she was? Yeah, yeah, because um, everybody talks about her. Everybody's like, oh, Yana's good. She has 80-something fights. So I, I knew I was kind of like, ooh, should I, should I not? What was going through your mind? Um, don't get knocked out. <laughs> Catch and counter one, bend your knees. Bend your knees, there you go. She got me in my, bo in my body, a hard body go. kidney shot, so. What does that feel like? Your stomach just turns, like you can feel it turning, like like butterflies, except worse. <laughs> oh, Yana, she's uh, phenomenal. She puts her punches together very well. Uh, she's really sharp. Uh, she's patient, and uh, she's got all those little key things that you know a boxer needs to have. So uh, I was pretty impressed. Pretty impressed. Stay with it. Why'd you back off? Why'd you walk up? Good? She's, okay. she's shorter and lighter than I am, um, but she, kick, she kicks my tail. <laughs> I mean, she's just, 
she's amazing. And nothing, nothing feels tough after you've worked with Ayana. That bell rings, actual competition, boy. She wants it more than anybody. I mean, she'll fight to the death, man. She, uh, she goes in there to, to win. That bell rings, boy. Just watch out. She has a killer instinct inside of her, and, and that brings out something that, I mean, you'll see it. If she gets caught real hard in a fight, she, you'll see it in her eye, like, I'm coming after you now. proud of her. She's worked so hard for it. She is a very good girl. I've seen girls her age that are out and about and partying and um, she's just different. She likes to stay home, be with her dad. Your dad is still your trainer, correct? Yes. How's your relationship with your dad? Big daddy's girl. <laughs> Just bend our knees on the inside. Don't get over your feet. Don't get over it right here. Get in, get in the box and just bend your knees right here. Bam. We do this every day, sometimes six, sometimes seven days a week. You know, on, on Sundays uh, we go run. On Saturdays we might get a day off. But Monday through Friday, it's every day we work. And, and mainly because that's what, this is what she wants to do. As far as he, Ayana, he's the most influential person in Ayana's life. He, I mean, he, he works with her here at the gym more than anybody else. He, uh, he spends time with her at home. He's always on her, man. He's always on top of her. He pushes her a lot. Stay inside the box. Don't get wide. Keep the box. Keep the box. Keep the box. Stay in there. Get your points inside. Bend your knees. You got to start it off. You got to start it off. He can be rough on her sometimes. Bend your knees. He can be rough on her. I got to look at him sometimes and like, hey, come down. He's like, no. Uh, but he just, because he expects the best from her, and he knows what she's capable of doing, and some days she just doesn't want to, and that, there. that frustrates there. the hell out of him. Go back. Put the hands on your head. Go back. Down. Down. I'm, I'm, I'm going to push you down. I'm going to push you down. Go down. You're going to do them all, all, all night tonight. I'll get mad once in a while. Just the pressure sometimes. I'm sure she does. I'm, I'm, she gets real frustrated with me. It's the furthest I could go, dude. As far as the training aspect, I, sometimes I might I might get harder on her because I think I feel that she's been doing this for going on 11 years that she should she should never relax in front of the other kids. So yeah, if she does that, then I do jump right down the middle of her throat. You gotta stand still, you're moving, you're moving when I want when I want you to counter the punches, you're moving backwards and you gotta be moving forwards. You gotta stand your ground and counter. And you're, then you're countering, but you're standing right there instead of moving your head. Move your head out of the way. Finish your counter shots and get the hell out of there. Don't stand in front of your counters. And if you are gonna stand, then you better be jabbing and doing something, keep him busy because he's catching you with a left hook because you're standing straight up. Stop standing straight up, move around your shots. Because I, I expect and I demand for her to lead these kids right, the little ones, you know, even the new ones. I expect her to be able to, I expect them to be able to follow her to that, down that road, you know? And I, if she goes off to the side, then I have to smack her back over here in the middle and keep her, keep, keep her up. keeping these kids going straight. And so. Let's go. And that's that poke, that's uh, makeup. No, no where poking in the eye. It's makeup. That. Let's go. Pushes me a lot, but I go through it, you know. I, I like to be pushed, because if it was easy, then I, I wouldn't be doing what I am now. It's absolutely amazing when you think about how much time they spend together, not just at the gym, but traveling 
you know, going to these different tournaments. Um, I think it's special, and it's something that, I mean, let's face it, a 16-year-old girl, typically her relationship with her dad is trying to close the door so she can, you know, whisper on the phone to someone behind his back, and it's not, it's not that way with them. They do basically everything together. She uh, talks to her dad like she should be talking to her mom. She confides in her dad. She um, cares what her dad thinks. Um, she's a dad pleaser. She just adores her dad and her dad's everything for her. It's a unique situation where I get to train my own daughter. We get to get, have that a different father-daughter relationship. And, and she gets to help me help the other kids. So I kind of got the best of both worlds here. And it's, it's pretty cool. Now we're gonna have a smoker. Uh, we got the Golden Girls coming up in three weeks. We got the Junior, junior Olympics coming up in uh, in about a month, so we want to prepare our kids. You know, you, it's one thing to, to work out to work out in the gym, you know, but it's nothing like fighting, man. So, gotta stay sharp. We gotta fight. He starts to hold on to you, shove him off, use the shoulder, shove him off, come back with a right uppercut, left hook. But let's dig that body because we don't like it into the body, baby, okay? Tired, bro. Those body shots hurt him. Okay? Don't let him rest. 
How do you feel? Okay, let's turn up the heat. Step into the double jab. Jab, jab, bam. Straight right hand. Finish with the left. Okay, either here or here or double it. Body and head, okay? Okay, okay. Once you land that straight right hand, finish up with that hard left uppercut because you're leaning right into it. Yeah. Let's go. On, work, baby. Punch, work, man. work. Gotta work, baby. Punch, baby. Punch, Justin. Punch. Straight punch. punches. Straight punches, baby. Come on. Work. And work, man. Time. Good job, guys. Good job. Good job, man. Oh man, she's like a little tornado, bro. She's, uh, when I see her spar, she's like Ayana started. Same thing, I see the same thing in her. Amy? She's a little, a little Ayana is what she is. Man, just the, the heart and the drive that she has for, for her age. Yeah, it's, the, it's the, almost the same thing as, as, as Ayana was. It's really, really, really close because the way I see how she is is like how I was. Why do you like boxes? Because um, it's fun and you can learn to protect yourself. And, like, you learn to protect yourself? Yeah. What's the funnest thing about boxing? Uh, the, I don't know, the exercise, I guess? She's something special. She's uh, what Amy has, you can't teach. Her work ethic is unbelievable. I mean, honestly, she puts some of the older people, me included, some days to shame because she's just absolutely tenacious about this. And she doesn't, she just doesn't stop. She's always over there working. Go. 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 Four. The drive that Amy has is ridiculous. Where's she at? She's always working. She's always working. She got great stamina because, I mean, she, like I said, she don't take no shortcuts. She comes over to work. She works harder than anybody else. You know? I think she is probably one of the hardest workers in this gym. I mean, every single time you turn around, every time you see her, she's working out. She's not talking. She's not playing around. She's not sitting around having a, a BS session. She's working out the entire time. Come on, push. Come on. Come on, come on. Great punches. Go. Oh. She's pretty tough. Uh, she trains hard. She, she keeps up with a big boy, so. Do you want to be a pro boxer? Yes. Why? Um, because I like it. I like boxing. Kids, boys that have been here as long as Amy are getting ran over by Amy right now. Four, one, two, three, four, seven. There you go. She beats up the boys, yeah. The boys her age, I mean, they can't compete with her. Where's the other guy at? Come on, man.
because uh, I think it's because she trains harder, she works harder, uh, she focuses more, and uh, uh, she she's tough. Do you think it was weird fighting a girl at first? Well, yeah, like, cause it's a girl. Like, I'm I'm more of a protective person. I don't like hitting girls and so. She's a fighter. She she wants to fight. It's in her blood. You can't teach that. Like a rooster, man. They go in there. They want to fight. Well, like Justin scared of me for some reason. I don't really try. I try not to punch him hard. Yeah, it's great to watch her. I love watching her. Like, it's a, uh, it's exciting. Step around, Justin. Step around. Come on, Justin. 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 Come
just not going to give us any funds, period, or if they're going to make our funds, um, let's just say instead of 3500 they're only going to give us a thousand quarter. I don't know. Or they may not give us a thing. Is Pell financially strong? Financially strong? Uh, no. We run into we run into problems, and we do we run into problems. Like I said, it's you know we don't charge them, so we don't charge the kids to come in. So everything we get is a lot of it's donations, and you know what I mean. We we put together our our, our smokers that we have here, and we get that money. We put it together to you know for we can send out. We can have food and travel money, and you know when we're on tournaments and we need to stay a, a night or two, they pay for our rooms and stuff like that. A perfect example: a couple weeks ago. The team needed money to go to Rio Doso. We couldn't quite get the money. And I called up one of the sponsors and I'm like, hey man, you know, you think you can sponsor us just a hundred bucks or something just to help us out? And he's like, yeah, go ahead, sure, come down. Man, that hundred dollars right there, it feeds, it'll feed, what, eight kids, you know, one meal. You know what I mean? And it gets expensive, that, that, that hundred dollars, that, that helps a lot. A lot of the, our operating costs as far as electricity and, um, the basic utilities of the building maintenance is um, is uh, handled from the city as well as none of our coaches are paid. Everyone that, that participates in does so on a volunteer basis. Thank goodness that the city has provided the gym and, and the, the utilities for that gym to, so these kids can work out so they have a place to go after school. Anything else as far as taking kids to to tournaments and, and uh, trips to participate in boxing to get experience, those all come from donations and they also come from fundraising. I believe about $70 for a year and that's, I mean, it's very minimal. If they don't have it, we figure a way to get it to these kids and, and if we have to do car wash, enchilada dinner, whatever, to raise the money. Hey, I'm going to need 17 pages, guys, okay? okay. Tell me if you're here. Um, what's going on here? We are having a fundraiser for the, for the kids. They got to pay out their registration. It's a yearly thing. And not everybody has the money. So that's why we, we do this, so we can just... We're a team, so we kind of just help each other out. So I'm here helping them, all the moms, so they could keep on. So the gym, you know, could be open and keep on going to fights out of out of town. Come back to see us. Tell your friends. So without these fundraisers, would it be pretty difficult to pay for all these trips and equipment? Yes, it will be really hard. Yes, because they have to, you know, stay over there and you know, pay motel, pay food, pay gas, and all that. And of course, the coach, you know, the coaches aren't gonna can be paying for everything. Does a situation ever come up where you have to pay for things out of your own pocket? Yeah, all the time. All the time. It, it, all the time. It comes out of my pocket. It kind of hurts a little bit, but I mean, it's, to me, it's worth it. Okay, baby, give me a hug. You did great. I thought you won the fight. It just happens at this sport sometimes, okay? What are we gonna do today? Kick some real dose of butt.
Calmado, calmado, amigo, a ver. Púchalo, púchalo, que no hay cancha. Get on the ropes, Sora. keep her in the middle of the ring, baby, okay? Sora. 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 Hey, relax, we're ahead on points, Sora. okay? Listen, whenever you throw a one-two, get underneath that hook. Remember? Work under the rope and come back with the right hand. Okay, get your points and don't bang with her. You don't have to. That's it, baby. You see it, now do it. Do it. There you go. Under the rope. There you go. Under hey, the rope. Make him come to you. Okay? Make him come to you. Tighten up everything because he's trying to catch those shots on the inside. I want you stepping right, right, right. Jab, step right, throw the right hand, left hook, okay? Close, baby. This guy looks if, if he gets scared, take it to him, all right? Let's not leave it to the judges. Alright? If, 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 if you scare him, too hard for him. That's right, baby. You're trying a lot a lot of days, man. A lot of days, a lot of sweat. A lot of blood in the ring. Hey, leave it all in here. This guy gets scared, baby. I need to see that pit bull come out of you. Alright? I need to see that minky come out of you, man. I need to see that killer in Easter, baby, okay? <laughs> Come on, let's shine up that diamond, baby. Let's shine up that diamond now. Double it up and come back to the right. Follow his jab back with the right hand. Follow his jab, stay on the ground. Follow his jab back with the right. Double right. There you go. Finish to the right. Inside. There you go. <laughs> When you hear me yell for the body, just drop, just bend, and rip that right hand to the body, okay? Because you're hurting her to the body. She doesn't like you to hit her to the body. But guess what we're going to be doing this next round? That's right, girl. That's what I'm talking about. Breathe deep, baby. Breathe deep. Breathe deep. Breathe deep. How you feel? Who's the champ? That's what I'm talking about. Go get some. One, two, three, four, five, step off to the sides. One, two, three, four, five, step off to the sides. And then get her to the body, okay? Step to the side! Again, step to the side! Right hand up! Step to the side! I told you we're gonna take this loss back. We're gonna win, okay? Listen to me. When she makes an adjustment, I'm gonna make an adjustment, and then you're gonna make an adjustment, and you're gonna win, okay? You gotta win this, you gotta win this round, right? I'm gonna talk about it. Yes, sir. Everybody's looking at you, man. Come on. This gonna be our first championship, right? This gonna be the first one, this gonna be the best one. Go get him. Right? Liberating. All that hard training, it paid off. Bonito, bonito. 
Listen, we gotta turn it up now, okay? We're down two rounds, baby, we gotta turn it up. We're down by, by probably three points on both rounds, okay? You gotta turn it up, baby. You gotta turn it up. Hey, Tight, it up tighten up. everything out. Tighten up. Everything, tighten up. And when I tell you to catch and counter, baby, I need you to catch and counter with two strong, hard, solid shots. Let's put him on his ass, okay? Woo! Two, three, two, three, two, three. Stay on him. Come on, Evan, don't bend down too far, baby. You're getting down too low. Double it up. Over the top, baby. Now. Follow him back, double the hook. Now! Nice! Uppercut! Uppercut! Stop! Yes! Watch one, watch one, watch one! Evan, Evan, listen to me! Okay? Hey, that was all you in that round, baby. That was all you in that round. Beautiful. Hey, you look, you look better than Ayana in here now. You know what? I think I'm gonna train you and let Ayana go with somebody else. How's that sound? Huh? Yeah? So have the kids gotten the credit they deserve from the community? Not at all. There's no, there's no, not even close. Why is it that the kids don't get the attention that they deserve from the community like the other sports programs? Um, I, I really don't know because when, uh, when my brother and I were fighting, you know, we were making uh, front page news. I don't know how come the paper hasn't given it more attention because um, this is a large Hispanic community and they love boxing. Uh, this, this community, Las Cruces, has always been known as a boxing community. Um, you know, there's really no reason to, to be overshadowed as good as these athletes are. 
by any other sport. I mean, granted, we're one of the great uh, football state meccas, but you know, the PAL program has developed uh, great athletes on a national level and international level. Because if people realize what we actually have here in this town, you know what I mean, like uh, state champions, national champions, you know what I mean, pros that came out of this gym that are up for world titles at this, at this point, you know what I mean, they're all out of this town. And, and if I think if we were to get a little bit more publicity, get out there a little more, let people know we're here, I think it would, it would help a lot. We have a man here, Austin Trout, that's gonna fight for a world title. This is major. He needs to get a lot more credit from, from, from hometown. He really does. He's not getting as much as he should at all. No, but a lot of people don't even really know what's going on with him. I mean, here in Las Cruces, out of this boxing gym, we have a, a guy that's, you know, he, already, he holds one world title already, and he's going he's gonna to go for his next world title, and nobody even knows about him. And it's, to me, it's ridiculous. He's ranked number two in the world. I mean, we're talking about the world here. You know, and uh, he was born and raised here in this boxing gym from little old Las Cruces. And I, I guarantee you when Austin gets that tower side, he's going to win. Austin, no trout doubt, is considered an outstanding boxer and person and is prepared to be the ambassador for boxing and his fellow New Mexicans around the world. Now, therefore, we, the mayor and city council of the city of Las Cruces, New Mexico, do hereby proclaim Monday, March 7, 2011, as Austin Trout, no doubt, date today, signed mayor of Mayagashima and Esther Martinez. Thank you. It's been a dream to represent Las Cruces in New Mexico, you know, throughout the world as a world champion. And, and now that I've reached that dream, I have a lot more goals to do. And, and you know, I'm, I'm far from being over. So hopefully we got a few more days reserved because yeah, we make a lot of history today. <laughs>